Hey what's going on guys, Turtywirty here and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Forge 1.17. In this tutorial we are going to be covering keybinds. So I'm just going to be covering a very basic keybind in this tutorial, so it will be all client side. However I'll be doing a tutorial next on packets so that we can handle something server side. So keybinds are very simple, a lot simpler than they may sound. So let's just get started. Firstly, we're going to come into our client package and we're going to create a new class. Now I'm going to call this key mappings. And this is basically where all your keys will be stored and where they will be registered. In an actual fact, we could go ahead and rename this to key init. I'm actually going to do that. Okay, you can put this in your core init. However, the reason I'm putting it in the client package is because keys are client only. And I like to keep my client stuff, stuff separate from everything else. So we can make this a final class, just like all our other inits. And obviously a private constructor. we can go ahead and create the field for our key. So we're going to create a public static key mapping. And for now, I'm going to call this just test key, or I guess uh, example key, example key mapping, yeah mapping example key mapping and just import key mapping then we need to create a method to register the keys so we don't use the forge registry in fact we need to use something called the client registry so let's create a private static key mapping register key this will take in a name it will take in an int key code and it will take in a string for the category actually I'm just going to shuffle this around I'm going to put the category before the key code there we go so the strings are together then let's create a final var key is equal to a new key mapping and this takes in three arguments it takes in the name of the key or I guess it's actually called the description and then it takes in the key code and the category so for the description or the name uh, I'm going to put key dot and then plus tutorial mod dot mod id if it wants to do that there we go and then dot and then plus name then i'm going to put in the key code and then i'm going to put in the category okay then we just need to call client registry dot register key binding and that takes in the key. Then we can just return the key. Okay. Then we can create another method and we can call this public static void. Now let's just call it init. And we can go example key mapping is equal to register key. Then this takes in the name. So for the name, I'm just going to call it example underscore key. Then it takes in the key code. And for this, we need to use input constants. And then you have every key, basically. The key I'm going to be using for this example is uh, S. I'll use key S. So key underscore S. Then for the category, you need to put key mapping 
dot and then you have these different categories you can also create a category i think you do that with this method here it's create name supplier i'm not sure but i think that's how you do it uh, i'm just going to put it in a normal category so i'm going to put it in uh let's just go gameplay okay that gives us an error all right we need to swap these two around of course and there we go now to, we need to actually call this init method so let's come into our client event package let's go in client mod events and inside of client setup we just want to call key init dot init okay let's just come down into our lang let's go ahead and put that in here so let's go key dot tutorial mod dot example underscore key and i'm just going to call this example key okay let's now come back into our client events let's create a new class in here let's call this client forge events and i'm just going to show you an example of this key actually working so we need at mod dot event plus subscriber mod id is equal tutorial mod dot mod id I still haven't covered events, so don't worry about this too much. And then bus, which that one, bus.forge, and then value is equal to dist.client. Okay, let's just create, make sure this is final, and then let's create our private constructor. Let's create our events. So subscribe event, public static void, and we can call this client tick. This just takes in a client tick event event. This is just a very basic example here. So if um. Okay, let's say if if key in it dot example key mapping dot is down and so I'm going to be relating this to the block entity tutorial that I did uh, previously and I'm going to say minecraft dot get instance dot player dot um riding dot I should be able to get the entity that it is riding. Let's see if I can find. It's not as passenger, I don't think, but it's similar. Right, so the passengers is basically the entities that are riding the player. So I need to get the entities that the player is riding. Okay, so if I say is passenger. And player dot get oh let's create a field for this no let's not do that that would be kind of weird um, okay and then we can say uh, get vehicle is instance of sitable entity which is our entity class okay 
and if that's true we can just for now we'll print something in chat so we'll just say um, minecraft dot get instance dot player actually let's make this a field because we're accessing it a lot here so player is equal to and let's go bar player here we go let's plonk that there plonk that there let's suppress the resource Okay, then we can say player dot display client message. Let's just do a new text component and let's just say beans and we'll leave it as false. We want it to be displayed in chat or should we leave it as true? Let's do true. No, let's do false. I don't trust doing true. Okay, let's run the game. Let's see if this works. Here we are. We are now in the game. So if we now go to options, controls, we should be able to go to gameplay and see our example key mapped to the S key. Obviously it has a conflict because walk backwards is also S. But if we now go ahead and sit on the toilet and press S, it says beans. Obviously it says it multiple times because um, you know, it, we're checking if it's down, we're not checking when it's released. I'm not sure if there's a way to check if it's released. Uh, probably not. Yeah, I doubt there is. So obviously you can just have to you just have to manually implement that delay yourself pretty much. So Let's just go to options, let's go controls. Let's change this. So let's give it uh, Y. Okay, if I now press Y, it changes. It's now Y. And obviously if I save and quit, and load back in, let's go options, controls, and yep, yeah, it's still Y. And we can reset it, it goes back to X. Fantastic. Uh, obviously that really spams the chat, but yeah, so if you guys did find this tutorial useful, please do be sure to touch that like button. Uh, and if you really enjoyed, please do be sure to share it. Also, subscribe as well, because then you will not miss the next tutorial where I will cover handling stuff server-side. And we will be able to uh, do some stuff with the toilet uh, instead of just printing something to chat. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Good bye. Grab her pants, did you do? And the food you love. The kind of deals that make you dirty.